What if a doctor told you that your child will inherit a harmful genetic disorder, but you can choose to have the disorder essentially cured? I'm assuming you would say yes. What if the doctor told you that this procedure is called gene editing? Would your answer change? Educating yourself about gene editing will help you understand that it is not as elusive as it seems. Gene editing is a technology that allows scientists to change an organism's DNA by either adding, removing, or editing specific DNA sequences. Three well-known methods of gene editing are CRISPR, which is an acronym for Clustered Regularly Interspace Short Palindromic Repeats, TALON, which is an acronym for Transcription Activator-like Nucleases, and ZFN, which is an acronym for Zinc Finger Nucleases. CRISPR, which is the most widely known gene editing tool, is a prokaryotic immune system that has been engineered for human use in the form of gene editing. When a virus enters the bacterial cell, the CRISPR produces protospacers in order for it to remember the virus. When the virus returns, the bacteria produces short RNA sequences that are then able to target, cut up, and disable the viral DNA. This process of cutting up and finding specific DNA sequences is being researched for human use in the form of gene editing. CRISPR systems are more widely used than other technologies because it is more efficient in targeting varying gene sequences. This is because the protospacer at the beginning of the guide RNA is about 20 nucleotides long in CRISPR technologies. However, it is 100 to 150 nucleotides long in other technologies, so CRISPR systems are more efficient in targeting varying gene sequences. After entering the body through stem cells, a viral vector or other means, CRISPR binds to the RNA. RNA controls protein synthesis and, control and carries instructions from human DNA. After, this CRISPR RNA complex targets the specific section in the DNA that will be edited, and then the DNA is cut at these sections. Then the modifications are introduced, and the DNA repairs itself with these modifications. One way to envision gene editing is to think of a stack of multicolored blocks. If I take one color in the stack out, then the other blocks are still in the stack, but that color is not expressed in the stack anymore. This is similar to removing the expression of a gene in gene editing. Although the most popular way of gene editing being used is to treat genetic disorders, that is not the only way that gene editing affects people. Some may believe that the benefits or drawbacks of gene editing will never apply to them, and therefore, they do not need to develop an opinion about the technology. However, gene editing affects human lives in many other ways. Gene editing can aid in drug discovery, cancer treatment, modification of food, disease modeling, and creation of synthetic materials. Any one of these applications has a potential to save an innumerable amount of lives. However, with each of these applications come implications and concerns toward this technology. Although cutting human genetic material sounds frightening, there's a lot of research from individuals and biotechnology corporations necessary in order for gene editing to become widespread and used in a clinical setting. In recent years, there's been a growing number of gene editing related clinical trials. And with the growing number of trials and knowledge about gene editing, one could prognosticate that someday in the future, gene editing will appear in a clinical setting. One way that gene editing could be used in a clinical setting is to cure monogenic disorders for diseases such as cystic fibrosis or muscular dystrophy. While no human successes have been recorded yet, researchers have conducted long-term studies of gene editing in mouse models. In one study, researchers used viral delivery of CRISPR to mouse cells in an effort to cure the protein that causes muscular dystrophy. Muscular dystrophy was essentially cured in these mice because the non-mutated protein was expressed a year after treatment. Procedures such as this could help eliminate potentially fatal genetic diseases that an offspring could inherit. Not only can gene editing cure genetic disorders, but it also has a potential for use in cancer treatment. Researchers are studying how they can engineer a patient's own T cells to recognize surface protein of tumor cells in order to fight cancer more effectively. The T cells would then kill the cancer more effectively since it is able to target the cancer better and therefore will allow a better immune response to the tumor. Knockout screening for drug discovery is yet another application of gene editing. 
Knockout screening inhibits the function of certain sections of a gene to determine how the cell would be affected by a medicine. Knockouts are lines of genes very genetically similar to the parent genes, and these are used to validate a drug target and compare the effects of drugs. With gene editing tools, these knockouts are able to occur at a much faster speed. And due to this, medicines are being able to be produced more effectively and quickly due to the accuracy at finding drug targets. During this recent coronavirus pandemic, CRISPR-Cas13 systems are being researched for use in conjunction with Sherlock diagnostic systems for coronavirus tests. This test takes about one hour to give results, is much cheaper than other tests, is a paper test that uses patient saliva, and has a high specificity in detecting specific nucleic acids. One reason it was so challenging to reopen businesses in public places was due to the lack of quick, widespread tests. And tests such as this CRISPR-Sherlock method could be used for coronavirus or other viruses in order to have less people unknowingly spread the disease. Because of the potential gene editing has in curing genetic disease and for diagnostic use, it is imperative to learn about what gene editing is and its implications because of its future potential in a clinical setting. When people are at the doctor's office and a doctor asks if you want to get a new me medicine or vaccine, many people would want to know about the vaccine's purpose and potential side effects before taking this medicine. Educating yourself about a new treatment is similar to understanding gene editing before using it in a clinical setting. This will allow you to make an important decision in the future about whether you will allow a doctor to give you a treatment that involves genetic modifications. However, with the new education comes necessary understanding of societal and scientific aspects of this technology. When I first said the word gene editing, an image of a baby that is stronger, smarter, and definitely more good looking than you probably appeared in your mind. While this alleged super baby could be a possibility in the future, it is important now to distinguish between gene therapy and enhancement. Gene editing can be divided into heritable germline editing and non-heritable somatic editing, but it further can be divided into purposes of treatment, prevention, and enhancement. Prevention, or risk reduction, is very important in the idea that it will decrease the overall incidence of the illness in the future and it is a middle ground between gene therapy and over-editing for enhancement. In 2016, a Chinese scientist edited the embryos of his future twin daughters in an effort to prevent them from developing HIV. This procedure was looked down upon by the scientific community because the actual chance of these daughters developing HIV was low, and this procedure could have increased the risk of these daughters developing other diseases, such as malaria. With further research into the effects of editing certain genes, researchers could determine the probability of a child facing negative effects from this disorder and then develop regulations for gene editing based on the chance that a child will inherit a harmful genetic disorder. Gene editing could be seen as controversial due to the fears surrounding super babies, off-target effects, and potential societal inequality. Specifically, there could be a division between the rich, who would edit their children, and the poor, who are then automatically inferior. There are ways this problem could be reduced. For example, there could be equal gene editing access for all citizens in the future, and this could save millions in long-term health care for chronic genetic or immune diseases. Also, there is a worry that people will over-edit their children, and there will be super babies in the future. Scientists can regulate the extent and reasons for gene editing to ensure that gene editing is only used for specific therapeutic reasons in an effort to make a healthier individual. In 2018, in response to increased interest in gene editing technologies, the World Health Organization established a committee to discuss the ethics of gene editing and its purpose. Because of the potential that gene editing has to cure disease, further research, education, and ethical discussion are necessary in order for gene editing to be effectively used in a clinical setting. We need to weigh the risk and reward of these treatments that could affect our lives and even our children's lives. To properly weigh these factors, it is vital to understand about ethical, scientific, and social implications of this technology. Gene editing is a new technology that has a lot of potential for the future, so it is imperative to learn about what gene editing is and its effects. 
Think about questions that are posed about the risk and reward of gene editing. How will gene editing inequality be regulated? Will the risk of off-target effects be outweighed by the improvement in a potentially fatal condition? How else can this technology be safely used to improve our society? By recognizing these questions and asking yourself these now, we can all be better equipped to effectively explore potential solutions to use gene editing in the future. Although gene editing sounds like a futuristic technology that is going to cause more harm than good, we need to conduct research and understand what gene editing is before forming our opinion about the technology. Science is all about research, and gene editing is no exception. We need to conduct research to understand how this technology will affect our lives and the lives of our children, how will it affect health, industry, and society, and if this technology is beneficial enough to be part of standard medical care in the future. If gene editing is used in the future, and a doctor asks if you want to use a treatment that involves genetic modification for your child, Will you understand the science behind this technology and consider its effects, or will you immediately oppose gene editing because you do not know what it is? Thank you.